started. Great. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Whoops. All right. Okay. Um, let's see. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provi provisions of the open meeting law, GLC 30A, subsection 18, this meeting of the Council on Aging is being conducted by remote participation. Uh, we're going to do a roll call check here. And as other members are added, um, we all recognize them. Um, so um, um, let's just start that. And um, so, um, and this is a time for you to check your um, uh, your mute function to mute and unmute. So I'll ask you to do that. Um, and I see Jacqueline that you're muted at the moment. So unmute, please, when you, yeah, because we want to hear that voice of yours. Oh. Okay. I, 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 I just had it pop up. I was fooling around with it. So oh. now I feel like the mission's accomplished if you hear me. I do hear you. We hear you. All That's right. great. All right. All okay. right. So let you be, we'll let you be the first. Uh, Jacqueline Smith Crooks. Um, Present. All right. Uh, Mila Montemayor. I'm here. Uh, Rosemary Koffler. Present. And uh, that's that's all I see in myself, of course, uh, and we'll recognize others as they they join us. But we do we have an, a sufficient number for a quorum at four of our seven members. Um, do we have any guests joining us this morning? If we would welcome you also. All right, um, thank you, um, that's good. And then um, I'm also, um, let's see. Um, so let's see, I, uh, Mary Beth always helps me uh, sort of recognize uh, if you wish to speak, just right, you can physically raise your hand, uh, that's fine. Um, and uh, let's see, all right, I think we're good. Um, um, uh, if there are, if there are many, any members of the public joining us, uh, uh, you're uh, free to, uh, this is a public uh, comment section. And so Dick Yorga is present and his hand is raised. I've, okay. I, I've a clicked, allow him to talk. So I didn't, uh, Dick, uh, are you all set? Can you speak? If yes, you, I was just, all I wanted to do was say that I'm here. <laughs> Wonderful. Good morning, Dick. We're, we're so glad you're joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Do you have any words to share with us in, in the public hot, um, comment section? No, I'm here to learn. All right. <laughs> so are we. So <laughs> we'll learn together. <laughs> That's really great. Okay. So um, let, let me just... Uh, um, so uh, our meeting, I think, I think will be short this morning, um, but it's significant. This is uh, this meeting is uh, concludes um, um, <clears throat> the unprecedented unprecedented uh, twenty uh, a program year of twenty twenty one, and I want to take um, I want to actually draw from uh, my a Native American friend of mine, uh, Audrey Shenandoah of the Haudenosaunee tribe in uh, upstate New York. And she says that if you're on, she urges people to, uh, to begin uh, their gatherings with gratitude. And I think that is an, uh, a good way to begin uh, this particular meeting. Um, and I wanna say, um, and I, I think uh, I'll wait until others join us to offer that that those words of gratitude. Uh, but I, I wanna just start with saying, with acknowledging um, that, that um, uh, this, this year, and uh, um, I will say specifically the uh, words of gratitude for each and every one of you 
um, in participating and being faithful and nimble and resourceful um, and, um, and making your voices heard. Um, I can't, I can't um, say how much I appreciate that um, in support of the voices and the lives of people in the town of Amherst, of seniors in the town of Amherst and those who love them. Um, and that is, um, and I think also it, it's important for us to recognize that this has been a year, uh, a difficult year um, and that we have had some losses, some losses beyond our reckoning, uh, losses um, of health, of, of, of people uh, that are close to us. Um, there have been some, uh, just the, 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 the uh, we've lost something and I think we feel it and some of the usual mechanisms of healing and repair that we have grown used to uh, and, um, and that has made it difficult. There's also, I think, been a kind of a sense of national reckoning and loss of innocence regarding um, the, um, the tragic and ongoing um, division in our country um, uh, divisions in our country uh, and uh, with respect to the racial, racial reckoning and the racial history um, in our nation. And that continues to go, go on and we still struggle uh, with that. Um, and, um, and I think it's mostly been a loss of innocence for members of majority culture who have too often uh, walked away from our, uh, our past um, and, even, um, and even our present, uh, that reckoning. So this members of this council have struggled with this and yes, it is indeed has been uncomfortable. And yes, we have need, needed to strengthen our muscles of, um, of listening and reconciliation um, uh, when that's possible um, and stamina um, and persistence. And um, so uh, that's, uh, that's the, the part of, I, I, I have some personal words of gratitude as well, but it's been such a, an honor for me to, to be part of this, um, of this effort. And I have learned so much in, from each one of you. Um, one of the things that we have learned and we struggled with um, is uh, making, um, uh, um, really to echo what um, Chad has brought up to us from time to time and a perspective actually, which I have shared with him. And that is that um, our, our structure has, is not, has not well served our purposes or, or our current understanding of the stages of life of elders. Um, it used to be that you be becoming a senior seemed to be something that might, have, might begin when you were 60 or maybe 65 in re retirement. But I think each of us um, has understood during the time of the pandemic, uh, especially that there are stages of, of elderhood um, and those stages and the, and the lives and challenges of those who are newly retired, those who are sort of in the middle stage, um, uh, maybe still has, have some of their health, but are starting to suffer creakiness or uh, take some, some tolls being taken uh, with ourselves or our partners. Um, and then later stages when, when we, you know, uh, we may need, we may need um, some kinds of support to continue to le lead a rich and engaged um, and full life um, or, and um, in the 80s and then the 90s as well. And th that demogra demographic, as Mary Beth has pointed out, of, of seniors with great needs is expanding in our town. And we have not yet come to terms with what that means. And it's messy <laughs> and we don't have a lot of answers yet, but what we do have is imagination. 
and have the ability to pull ourselves together and have conversation. Conversations, at hopefully face-to-face -face as we, we connect, but we are resourceful and we will find ways to walk, to be witnesses to our own imagination and walk through this together. One of the things that we did, which I have mixed feelings about, is that we revised a committee structure. And um, the structures, um, the structures themselves reflect, um, I think our effort was to reflect structures that, that are consonant with the mission um, of the Council on Aging, the historic mission of advocacy and of service. And um, we distilled those, uh, our mission into three areas um, that uh, I think uh, are, are legitimate um, uh, focus, um, which include health and well being, program and service, and diversity, equity, and inclusion. And that latter one um, is um, a new focus, uh, long overdue, but uh, um, represents um, a new area of serious work and repair and imagination in, again in our, in our town. Um, so um, that is not the only thing um, um, that um, uh, I would hope we would look at in the future um, because uh, Tim um, has uh, been uh, one of the voices that has expressed concern about senior services and its funding structure mm -hmm. and how we, uh, um, how that structure um, is different from other town departments and how, um, we need to have some serious conversations about how uh, to provide um, both the level of services and also prepare for a future where the, we know that the need will expand for both advocacy and services uh, for, um, for uh, the treasured grandmas, grandpas, and other seniors in our town. So, um, that is, um, I can imagine that, and, and, and by the way, um, uh, unless I've missed something, um, though uh, a new senior center is part of the, uh, a, a plan that is uh, perhaps about four years away, um, we need to insist that seniors ourselves are involved in the in, in the planning process. Uh, nothing for us without us is <laughs> the motto. Um, and so that, that, that engagement uh, needs to happen. Um, and and uh, from the, from the get-go, we don't, you know, and, and, and that engagement needs to be meaningful. Um, so um, some of the things I think that we have not been able to do, but which we sorely need um, um, are a retreat of some sort. I, I mentioned um, uh, um, and some gatherings um, that, that, will, that will allow us to do some of this basic work, call it a ret ret some retreats, call it some listening sessions, one of the things my hope is is um, that we we do um, possibly in the, in this in the summer or at some unspecified uh, time in the future, but uh, soon, is to have. I would love to have a listening session uh, with Mary Beth, uh, just to listen about her vision, her priorities and struggles, and how we can best support her as a council. Um, um, and um, um, and that I think is a sort of a core mis um, um, uh, possibility. 
Um, the other thing, my other concern I have is I can see us doing brainstorming sessions. That's easier to do when we're um, in, in the company of each other, because instead of feeling like built billiard balls sep separated and distant, um, we build our energy builds uh, we we build on each other if we if we we're doing some brainstorming around certain issues and that unleashes some imagination. Um, there's a psychologist named Bruce Tuckman who who's, uh, speaks about who many years ago wrote about uh, forming, storming, norming, and performing, and uh, we've done a lot of storming this year and uh, some fo and forming, <laughs> uh, but and you know that we and, and I my sense is of that is that it's also kind of a circle around some of the specific projects we have, but I invite us to do that and to realize to realize that um, we're not trying to shred <laughs> each other in the process. Uh, public service is uh, a hot kitchen to be in, and it is not for everyone. And uh, those who who are still standing and engaged um, are uh, is very um, uh, are very special uh, to me. Um, this I want to say that this is the time um, when my my term as chair. Uh, concludes. And um, I want to share that this, um, this has been, this has been a tough year for me. And I don't mind being vulnerable around that. <laughs> I think sharing that vulnerability is a strength um, that uh, is underestimated. Um, my, my husband has had some very, very serious um, health issues which continue. And I saw some of my own health issues uh, decline. I've moved from pre-diabetes to diabetes and my blood pressure skyrocketed. And um, I, you know, I had, uh, and I'm recognizing that I need, um, and there are a lot of other things happening in my life that I need to address in order to continue to be on the path uh, and offer my best self to everyone. Um, I say that uh, because um, I have made the difficult decision to, uh, to, to finish my term and end my term as chair. Um, and, um, uh, but I do wanna say after struggling some, I have concluded that I would like to continue um, as a member of the council. And, um, um, I've had a conversation with my my partner about that, and um, who faces yet another surgery, minor surgery, but still a surgery um, in August. And um, so, um, so what I am proposing um, is um, that we um, not have meetings. We give our uh, ourselves a break. Um, for, uh, for July and August, not have uh, public meetings. Um, but my, my hope is um, that um, we create, I'm, I'm thinking more possibly in August, maybe late August. Um, this is still kind of in the planning stages, but um, uh, certainly Mary Beth and Rosemary, uh, my predecessor as chair, and I have been in, in conversation about um, how we could um, do some of that, um, listen, having some listening sessions or brainstorming or really figure out this issue. I, one of our challenging issues is that we, we worked hard in developing a, a committee structure in the service of our, our, our three major missions, um, but um, it is problematic in, in a board so small, um, how, how that would even work um, with the requirements of um, committees uh, needing to post their minutes uh, or to post their meetings, to take minutes. Um, um, we don't have the kind of staffing or skills or technology to be able to do that. So, um, part of what we were kind of th thinking through, and I'll share this, is to invite 
uh, is to, um, and this is again preliminary and open for discussion, but uh, to, um, to have a, um, uh, to work together as a committee of the whole um, so that uh, we will we will still have a structure that meets the requirements of the open and the spirit and the uh, of the open meeting law, but also be able to work specifically on some priorities and and problems um, and um, in the service of our mission. So that's kind of where we are with that, and um, um, I, I just um, I get I want to say also that that means what what that means is that the um, typically in this month we would submit a uh, a, a, a set uh, from from a nominating committee a set of recommendations to fill any vacancies that occur on our board and um, we um, hold on here I just can you still see me? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Something strange happened here. Yeah. Mila, somehow you clicked screen share and we're viewing your screen share. So if you could stop sharing your screen, <laughs> go down, go down to the bottom toolbar uh, on your screen and you'll see share screen. And if you could click that. I don't know what's happening here. Hmm. Mila, can you hear us? There we go. Okay. We're back. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All right. Good. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, <Yeah>. Mary. <Mila. laughs> it, it helps when somebody knows what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a, that's a fact. Okay. So to continue, um, um, I had a, had appointed um, a nominating committee and people had stepped up and um, Shortly after that, um, Tim, who was to convene, uh, resigned, um, and we so we're we have to figure out how to reconstitute that and con convene that and work through that. And I think, um, as Mary Beth and Rosemary and I spoke yesterday, we we have to um, as we repopulate our our um, council, um, my hope is that we continue the forward progress on our, um, um, uh, and, uh, with intention on um, diversity and inclusion, um, and that we're very intentional also um, when I say diversity, not only racial diversity and ethnic diversity, but I'm also speaking about also taking a look at maybe some other uh, skills and also frankly, um, looking at um, uh, re recruiting a demographic, an age demographic uh, uh, of um, uh, individuals who um, um, have skills, uh, and the energy of the the newly retired, <laughs> uh, and uh, because um, that that's going to be necessary to serve the long term uh, goals of of moving the council into the future. Um, so, you know, I'm I'm sharing that with everyone uh, just to. Um, just to um, say that um, 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 and be explicit that um, explicitly invite each and every member of the council to feel uh, empowered to share with me and with Mary Beth and Paul Bockelman and others um, the uh, it, the uh, recruitment and encouragement of individuals who share our purpose and our mission and and uh, and the path that we we have um, and that we are we are on um, and um, again drawing upon uh, the words of Audrey Shenandoah she says you don't have to 
uh, you need not hurry if you are on the right path. And uh, we, you know, we've we've stumbled on a path sometimes, and we've 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 taken a few detours here and there. But it feels like we were headed in a direction uh, that is um, uh, affirming, life affirming, community affirm affirming, um, and um, it feels liberating, and uh, to me, and energizing. Um, and um, I hope that's where we can go. So um, let me just shut up for <laughs> the moment and, and make some room for any, I know that I've, I've said a lot, I, uh, any, any comments from council members um, or anyone else? Hmm. Mary, um, Rosemary. I, I, I do believe what you're saying is that anybody on the council currently who has ideas for people who might be appropriate members for the council to feel free to come forward and um, make those suggestions. And um, there is a process simply filling out the community activity form. Yes. And uh, if, so if anyone has ideas, any member, we encourage that. Yes. Thanks for that. Um, I would also add that one th a great, um, I'm being a bit self-critical here, but uh, one thing uh, need that we have is to do a better job at orient orienting our new members. Um, and I'm, I've also looked at that whopping uh, doorstop of a, a council member's manual, which nobody really reads or only the very, the fanatics read. <laughs> Uh, and and so our, our goal is to trim that down. It's antiquated. It's uh, too much, um, and um, and and just um, make it you know um, more useful to our members. And so that's kind of another summer project I think that uh, we're doing as well. But yeah, I appreciate that. I think that that's that's valuable, um, and. Um, um, you know, a, a great suggestion. Yes, Pat and I talked about um, the orientation and maybe um, looking at this huge manual. So if anyone would like to join us in that project, we would welcome that because you got the manual. You can tell us what you think of it and what you fi found useful if you even opened it. <laughs> and, but I think there are some essential items that should go into that manual, but um, much of it is antiquated. So we would welcome those suggestions. Absolutely. Yes, and don't hold back on your reviews. Um, We've tried to create a culture of honesty on this council and frank talk. So we're <laughs> that's we we th think that that also serves our um, our purposes. So absolutely, um, I, I would say if any of you are particularly called to um, to that project or um, any of our, our core conversations, uh, our core focus, you know. Health and well-being, or program and services, or diversity and inclusion. Um, um, my hope is that while you're um, uh, recreating uh, some this summer, uh, <laughs> that you might, uh, you know, do some of the fun work of of imagining imagining uh, what what might be possible, and and uh, so you might want to step forward. And also, I mean, I I have to say honestly. Um, I look for, I think, I look forward to people that I enjoy working with, uh, who are community members. So I'm starting to think about as I travel around and things are opening up a bit. Um, it's it's a process of real discovery, um, and uh, I I think uh, so. I invite you uh, to discover um, uh, others. Uh, to, um, I would also say that um, we are that members of our council do. Um, need to um, be from the town of Amherst, um, have a residence in the town of Amherst. And um, so that is, that is, um, that's a requirement. Um, we, we also have been brainstorming about how uh, 
to draw upon some specific expertise that's needed um, as well. And um, so um, anyway, if you have ideas about that, you could share them. And we do have four vacancies. So that's a considerable number of people. That Absolutely, we yeah. Um, so, um, Jacqueline, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Um, I, 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 I just want to uh, thank you and, and thank Rosemary and Mary Beth uh, as a team of uh, dynamic workers. This is my, I'm concluding, you might say my first year. Um, and um, I have to tell you the spirit of my ancestors uh, is rising in me and I have to say to you, it makes me feel like going on, feel like going on. I feel like, feel like going on mm. and 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 what what it did for me i there was so much as you were talking and bringing things into focus uh i i heard the echo of maxine waters uh, reclaiming my time as an elder and all too often um, we equate elderhood with, with neediness and to have a vision for creating a council that rises to the occasion for elders of wholeness is just so energizing. It is so energizing. Uh, yes, we will do something for or advocate on behalf of, but it's not aimed at disempowering by disabling. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that came through so clearly uh, in, I guess, a very different way. And I had not given words to it, but framing it, in that way makes a difference. The stages of elderhood, having a place where it's not designed just for quote, helping you because you are helpless, but working with partnering along the way, mm -hmm. not excluding providing help of the, that, that, that addresses the neediness, but knowing that there's still some life left in you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. Um, I know my mama used to say, when I, when I get to be 100, which she didn't get to be, she said, I'm not going to be sitting in a rocking chair waiting for somebody to wait on me. And I'm going to accept that waiting on, but I'm going to let you know that I'm not helpless. <laughs> and, and so this is... This is like uh, repeating that, repeating that. And it, there's, it's, it, it's keeping elders alive, not just physically, but keeping elders alive holistically. Um, and the, the vision feels not just sound, it feels even clearer. It feels even clearer. Uh, not static and not stuck. Mm. All right. Thank you. And I appreciate that. It's like um, grounds for appreciation. Mm. Mm. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much for that. Um, uh, I've come to realize in my antiquity that um, interdependence is a spiritual practice. Yes. And mm -hmm. so, and that 
your comments really uh, raise that um, image in mind and, and I'm still learning. I'm still learning about that. Um, and um, so thank you. Mm. Um, any, any other, any other feedback or questions or um, observations? Well, go ahead. I have nothing as profound as what Jacqueline just said, but I do want to take a moment at this point in time before we get on with um, business details to thank you, Pat, for your leadership, your commitment, and your dedication as chair of the council. Mm -hmm. It has been, Pat, you took on that role at the most challenging time in history, to say the least. And during the year, we've had several new members and the difficulty of not being able to meet in person and form meaningful connections and, and working together as a team was very challenging and you just never gave up. You, you just were there and came up with your ideas and, and thoughts and made co phone contact with people to connect. And I especially applaud you for your ideas and your um, revision of the committee structure, because I feel like create committees that give us achievable goals and also give us guidelines to do the meaningful work mm -hmm. for elders and, and for the people we serve. Mm -hmm. So I wanna really thank you for all that you have done mm -hmm. as chair of the council. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes, did hope. Um, I, I wanted, um, and back at you, <laughs> I want to say, um, before we conclude this love fest, <laughs> I want to say, I want to say a few uh, things about individuals, um, as, um, and again, my own expression of gratitude, and, and put this on the public record, which is, I want to thank, um, you know, each person on the council has, um, um, I'm, I'm, I make the assumption that they've, they've done the best work that they can do. Um, I appreciate Yvette Palacine's uh, commitment to service um, and her, her listening um, and her energy. Um, and, um, and I hope, and I hope uh, that um, we will continue to connect with her personally uh, she's just, she's so fiercely practical with some wonderful projects and I hope we continue to nurture that relationship. I want to say thank you to, to Greg and to, to Chad, uh, to Greg Bascom and, and Chad Fuller um, for um, their um, being keen listeners uh, and commentators. Um, I appreciated Tim's um, honesty um, in saying, um, um, and uh, you know, in the face of, of uh, um, dissent, uh, difference, and uh, and we, I, I want to make room for that. Uh, we need to make room uh, for people bringing uh, different perspectives to the work that we do together. Um, and I appreciated his well articulated uh, concerns about the financial underpinning of the, of the senior center and where we, where we go ahead. That's really a huge topic and uh, we, we did not dive into it um, this year, uh, but we've got to address it. Um, I also want to salute, this would have been, um, this is the end of the term for uh, Sue Dirks and what a trooper. Uh, if you've ever done mi minutes for any organization in your lifetime, you understand uh, her skill, her dedication, her faithfulness. Uh, you know, it's just mind blowing what she's done for us. And um, in spite of uh, a lot of her own specific challenges, she, she's another one who has persisted and helped support our common work. Um, I also appreciate um, and value and honor and I'm honored by Jacqueline 
um, Jacqueline's courage and her steady drumbeat for justice. It inspires me and encourages me and keeps me on the path <laughs> that where I want to be. Um, and um, that has been um, that has has um, kept my heart beating strongly, and um, I love it. Um, <laughs> um, also, I want to say thank you for Rosemary, who has been a bedrock for me, um, and uh, just her her energy and her kindness and her organizational skills. Mm -hmm. Wow, um, mm -hmm. it's a it's quite a package. I could go on forever, but mm -hmm. anyway. And then finally, <clears throat> I wouldn't have joined this council uh, if I. Uh, uh, you know, several years ago, um, if I had not heard Mary Beth say, um, who's at the table and who's missing? I heard her say other things, but that stood out to me. And what that, and the message that I heard in that was that everybody matters, everybody counts. We've got to figure out how to, how to put that into practice um, as we, 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 work together, as we uh, relax together, as we learn together. And um, I was, she's been dedicated and resourceful uh, and clear-eyed and uh, the staff uh, that she has built and that she nurtures uh, has served us well during, the, during uh, this difficult time. Um, I, I am amazed at that. And, and uh, so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, um, again, I want to express individual gratitude and put that on the public record. Um, I, I think that uh, we can transition now uh, to uh, Mary Beth's report. Um, and, um, and that's item two on our agenda. Thank you, Pat. And thank you, everyone. And I'm just going to begin just with a very quick Thank you to each and every one of you because this year has been extraordinary in just about every possible way. Um, and honestly, it has been your enduring support which has gotten me through. So I could get teary eyed because it has been a huge challenge. Um, you know, we, as, as Pat mentioned, we've lost some very dear people in our community. We've witnessed a lot of uh, physical and cognitive loss due to having to shelter. Um, and, and the way in which this particularly struck our population, which has been very hard for all of us. And either as we gather and we begin to open up and classes get together, we are always reminded of those who are not joining us, who have either passed or, or are at a different stage of a need for a different level of care. And so I, I think that it's profound in many ways. And, and I would not have gotten through this without each and every one of your support. You know, Mila, I've spoken to you so many times. We talk monthly. Um, your joy for life and how you present yourself is just, it fills us up here. Um, you know, Jacqueline, I, we've gotten to know each other so well along the way. And I appreciate your honesty and your voice and the gravitas that you bring to every conversation. Um, it, it has been so important to me to center your voice um, because your voice has been missing. Um, and Rosemary, you know, I, you know, we go back from the day that I arrived, my very first day, you were there to greet me and, and to hold us together. Uh, Rosemary was the first person before even masks were required. She, she made me a mask and drove it down, dropped it in a paper bag uh, on the sidewalk as we were handing out lunches and was like, you better start wearing a mask. And, you know, uh, Pat, I'm just going to call you out as, as just one of the great uh, persons with imagination. Um, you buoy my spirit when I get stuck in sort of the quagmires. Um, you can continue to elevate, to raise our vision, and to bring out the very best in us. And, and I thank you collectively, you know, uh, Tim, Greg, every, Chad, um, 
pursue how together, even though we haven't been able to, to meet in person, um, that we have been able to bring forward the voice and to center the needs and the hope of our community and to keep us safe. Uh, you know, that's been my, my greatest challenge is can we just get through this as safely as possible? So thank you. Um, I wanna applaud your energy. I wanna applaud your passion, Pat. Um, I, I, you, you've sustained me. And, and the work of the senior center. Um, and, and collectively, uh, what I wrote out when I was thinking about this this morning is that you've insisted that we be true to who we are or who we say we are. And I to join in with you on all of that, it's, uh, it's challenging and it's jarring and it's exciting and it's hopeful and it's inspiring. So certainly the discourse over the past months have been challenging in lots of ways. And I also think it's very promising. And it is the reason why I'm here to do that work with you um, is to elevate what we do and to become a, a more whole and inviting and welcoming community and a senior center. Um, and I think you've made it very clear that um, you know, your commitment to that is very firm and your voices are strong um, and, and we can continue with that. And I think it's only gonna get better as things begin to open up more and we can gather in person. So I also have a quote for you, Pat, you love quotes. So um, I have, you know, James Baldwin told his nephew, we can make America what America uh, must become. And I think that we could insert Amherst that for that in this group that, you know, we can make Amherst and the senior center what we need to become. Um, so we have a lot of work ahead of us, but I just want to applaud you all for your support and your vision um, and your courage uh, to stay in these conversations and to continue to commit to having those challenging conversations. So with that, um, I'm going to switch to our business, which is I had shared uh, with you all a letter that we received from UMass, a really um, touting um, our senior center nurse, Karen Rainin. She did an incredible job uh, with the UMass students this year and, and really um, transformed that program and participation to one that was bilaterally meaningful. And so I think, it, you know, apropos Jacqueline's conversation around neediness versus you know, there's learning going on both ways. I, I think that when we do the multi-generational exchanges, it's really important that it's not just, oh, that the nursing students are serving seniors, that seniors are serving them in their learning. And, and it was just, you know, cross-directionally so positive. Um, and she brought in a lot of reflection and processes and integration um, and follow-up that had never ever transpired. Um, sometimes students would accidentally get called by seniors at 10 at night on a Saturday evening and Karen would be answering those calls at 10 at night and checking in on seniors in the community late hours on weekends and things like that because uh, you know the student would be concerned that they had been contacted um, so it, it was just it was an incredible um, commitment by her and again she's only worked here during the pandemic she's off-site and so it, it just speaks to uh, what the potential remains when she returns here. Um, more importantly, you didn't cite this as a success of the council, but I want to bring up that we would not have the project for the walkway here at the Bangs without your insistence that I do more. And so I want to thank you. And, and you know, I always think of this council, it is advisory, but I love, I, I, I come from a system and a deep respect for checks and balances. And I like when people ask me challenging questions and challenge me to do more. And you asked me to do more around safety and walkability. And Pat kept pushing me like, don't give up, like insist that this moves forward. Like she was constantly nudging me, um, you know, go to the webinar, do this, go back to the town, tell them we need this. So um, we will have that walkway. The um, contractor comes today to size up the, the site and they will begin immediately. So that new walkway down to the Musanti Center and to the Clark House, and then that really perilous walkway between the Bang Center and heading up towards East Pleasant are all going to be addressed forthwith. So thank you. And that is one you can check off your list. 
Um, our scaling up is going really well. As you saw uh, in the newsletter, we have a number of classes that have returned and it is, um, it is our reason for being, to serve as a site where people can come, be welcome, have connection, move their body. The, the research and the science behind exercising, promoting um, cognitive repair even is profound. You know, all of the centers of science that research aging, exercise and movement, it can be in fact reparative, not just a stopgap. So uh, that's why I was so keen on bringing in our movement classes. Um, and some are slowly repopulating and some have gathered, you know, with their, with their groups. Everything here is masked um, and we are socially distanced and we have occupancy limits. So the, the feeling uh, among our participants is that it is extremely safe. Um, everybody's abiding by all of the rules without any um, issues or problems. And they are just simply thrilled. The best comment I received was an individual who came out after Zumba class. And she told, I said, how was it? Um, because you could see the joy on their faces, the joy in the sweat, like it's sweating together. There's just nothing like it. And they, the woman said to me, um, Mary Beth, it was all I could do to not cry all during class because I was so happy. Mm -hmm. So I just want you to know that that's what we're building and what we are hopefully going to continue to do. I'm looking forward to some more information coming from the health director for June 15th when the state of emergency ends. Um, the only things that we have not returned are classes where we cannot have social distancing. So the dancing that occurs um, that is like ballroom dancing where you can't socially distance. Um, things like cribbage, which was again, was a huge group where they can't do it with uh, social distancing. So I'm waiting to see how those will be able to be folded in and when they'll be able to be folded in. But I think we're, we're on a great trajectory. We have foot care back, our computer room is open. And uh, I, you know, I, I have an inquiry into the health director of when we can open up for simply socially distanced social space. So we haven't been able to be a drop in, right? Where, and that was really one of our great uh, you know, abilities is just to be a place where people could come in, have a cool drink and just exchange, you know, pleasantries with somebody. So I am hopeful it will happen either June 15th or July 1. Um, so we're looking for more information on that. Um, I, I really appreciate having that, that summertime off because um, I think that, that it's gonna be a good regenerative time for us and sort of thinking in new ways about who we might be able to recruit. I am in conversation with the farmer's market about possibly setting up a um, our uh, senior chat there so that we would have a stand and because I think that that would be another great opportunity and another way to reach people who haven't been coming into the center and to introduce ourselves. So um, what I discussed is possibly going down there twice a month, we would have our own senior center stand. If seniors who are either in uh, programs or whatnot would like to do it with me, uh, you know, we would, we would just be there for the day answering questions. We have information about what we do, what we're offering and, um, and hopefully reaching out to some more folks. Uh, the community participation officers go out to the mobile farmer's market. And so we hope to tag along for that. So looking at some, some ways to sort of recruit folks um, and rather than waiting for them to decide to come down here, which may be a barrier. I do hope you'll all participate in the Juneteenth celebration. The Bank Center will be a, a, a large part of that activity and a celebration. Uh, people will be coming into the poll room to look at the, the granite plaques that we have. Deborah Bridges, who works with us as our receptionist, has been a keen part of that. It's her family's history. We will have uh, an area set up in the green behind the bank center with some music and chairs and relaxation and some food. So I think it's going to be another just great opportunity for us uh, to really live our welcome. So I'd love to see anybody who's available to come by on that Saturday. And um, um, Wednesday, June 23rd, there's at 2.30 to 4 at the Bank Center, there's going to be the listening sessions for the health department. So the Board of Health, Nancy Gilbert as the chair, is sending out uh, information and it will be coming out in the next day or two. 
and I believe she's going to be sending it out to all the members of the Council on Aging and in a number of public ways. But that will be an opportunity. What they're asking is for the public to come and participate in sharing what are the barriers to health and well being, uh, both you know, in terms of what the health department has done well, what we are not doing, and looking more broadly at the community. And I think that we have a lot of ideas. So we have a we have a, a newly formed committee structure, but I think we could all probably name a number of ways in which uh, this past year's experience could be um, augmented and ways in which um, those health services, uh, I, I think, yeah, I think there's a lot of room for improvement um, and looking at the Musanti Center. And so I just would invite your voices. Um, if you can't attend in person, I know that they're also looking at a Zoom session. If there are comments that you wanna share both in writing or, or whatnot, please contact me. I will make sure that your opinions um, and, and also the voices of other members um, that you know have not uh, been at the table are represented. So I just, I, I think that that's a, an important opportunity for us focused on health and well-being. And um, I have a lot of, I, I've been doing a lot of research on that. So I'll, I'll, be, I'll be there and I will be sharing. And lastly, I, I think probably the, the thing that we've accomplished most and what we've been focusing on has been um, our vaccination rates. And if I can do this appropriately. I do, I sent to Pat, I'm going to try to share my screen. So, and it's hopefully, here we go. I'm hoping this works for us. Share. So this is uh, an email that I received. So one of my fellow directors tracks weekly the vaccination rates in Western Massachusetts. And I will use my cursor to show you what's relevant and important. But part of the reason why we decided that we could safely scale up and, and reopen in, in a very safe and slow manner is our vaccination rate, which you know has been the heart and soul of the work that my staff has done. So um, here is a chart of, uh, these are the names of the communities um, in Western Massachusetts, which are part of, of this survey. And this is taken from the state statistics. And this was on May 18th. So that's the last graph I've gotten. The only community that's at 100%, it's this one right here at the very end here, Williamsburg, a uh, very tiny town. And so they are at 100%. So if we start looking at who's uh, in second place, it is our beautiful town of Amherst. And that's us. So Amherst includes Pelham. So the purple line, um, which you know he puts us as number two, but I think of us as number one because Williamsburg is tiny and it's a lot easier for them to just grab their folks. Uh, the purple line is the population of 65 to 74 year olds. So we have over a little bit over 90% of our 65 to 74 year olds vaccinated. And here you can look, you know, that many other communities, those purple lines are, are significantly lower. You know, here's over here, this is West Springfield. Um, even if we were to look at Northampton, we are, we are above them and they got a higher percentage of vaccine. We, they got three quarters and we got one quarter. So I, I just, um, this is something I'm immensely proud of. Uh, the way that not only my staff, but the town staff, the ambassadors, and, and everybody really took this up as a call to arms. If you look at the blue line, the blue line represents the next higher uh, population, which is the 75-year-olds on up, so 75-year-old plus, and we are at about probably 83 to 84% for that group. And in that measure, we have a few communities that are a bit above us, Southampton, Northampton, and it looks like Munson, but, um, and possibly North Brookfield, um, yeah, and possibly Beltertown, but so, so we're doing well, um, because if we look at the, the younger adults, that vaccination rate is about 43% for younger, younger persons. So, so we have really kicked it out of the park. And lastly, I just wanna share that the yellow is 50 to 64 year olds. And you will see that we are also in second place with about 75%. Williamsburg is 100% on everything and we are right below them. So our 
50 to 75 year olds are the, the second highest vaccination rate um, in Western Massachusetts. And our, um, our 75 year olds were a bit behind, but that's a tremendous accomplishment. And again, that was with your support and uh, with, with the willingness of the community to have the, um, the um, senior center closed because it was the ability of us to devote ourselves fully and engage in a vaccine clinic. So thank you so much. And I look forward to a wonderful uh, summer. And I hope I do see you either virtually or otherwise. Please don't hesitate to call me. We have lots of uh, time to recoup and to, uh, I think, plan for the promise that, that Pat and you all have imagined. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. It has been nothing but a pleasure. So. All right, thank you very much, um, Mary Beth. Um, I want to um, uh, um, next uh, recognize and welcome um, Chad Fuller to our, our conversation. Hello, Chad. We're glad you're, to see you. <laughs> We're glad you could join us. You missed some of the really juicy parts. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, if you might want to uh, consider uh, reviewing this when the recording uh, of our meeting um, is posted. I'll make sure that you get a copy of it because it's been quite an extraordinary meeting. Um, I, let's move on next to uh, the secretary's report and um, um, the sec uh, Rosemary Koffler uh, stepped forward and did our minutes, did a uh, remarkable job. Um, I made um, really, I'm, I have pr I proposed not so much a correction, but just an additional information um, on a topic heading on racial equity. That's in red, you have it before you. So what I'm, uh, but everything else looked good to me. Does anybody else have any corrections or comments uh, they want to make? Um, if not, I would like to ask for a motion uh, to, uh, of approval. Um, I move to approve the meeting, the minutes. All right, and a second, please. Second. Thank you. Uh, all in favor, signify by raising your hand. All right, very good. All right, uh, the minutes are approved. Uh, we have no, I, uh, I, are there any topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance? Um, I, I have none to add to that. Um, I wanna talk about, just briefly just say, um, it's premature for us to sort of figure out how we will communicate. How, um, I, I would say to bore all council members, um, just uh, you, you'll receive occasional communications from us and uh, you can always pick up the phone and call uh, me even though my ter term has ended. Um, um, we can talk with each other certainly uh, a free country, so to speak. <laughs> and so, uh, um, you know, so that's possible. But I, I do want to stay. I, I, I want us to continue to uh, noodle over our our future together, and uh, over uh, repopulating, uh, nominating, and inviting people. Um, and so you'll you'll receive. Heck, you'll receive some occasional uh, emails from me as a as a fellow council member, and that's you know you'll just get that uh, until we develop because we we're absent a chair, and so that's certainly another thing that we need to talk about uh, how that's going to look, what our leadership structure will look like. Um, so uh, let's help each other think together about that, um, and. Um, um, if uh, there's nothing uh, else, um, we, um, I mentioned, Chad, I just to bring you in. We yeah, will before you go on, um, you said phone. I have no phone. Everything for me is email. Oh, okay. So that's, that's noted. And so uh, you, we'll include you in email communications. Um, the next meeting um, is to be determined and 
will, um, but we will, uh, just so you know, Chad and others know, we will not be me having holding meetings in July or August um, as a uh, Council on Aging. We may have other gatherings, but they will not be meetings of the Council. Um, I'd like to, I'm inviting, uh, is there a motion for adjournment? The kidney stone and, and labor, or uh, it be a pregnancy. So. so moved. All right, and do I hear a second? You're probably, she probably. Second. All, right. All in favor, signify by hand or voice. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, uh, the meeting is adjourned and thank you everyone. Thank you, thank you, Pat. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Pat. You didn't get to read your...